Next is philosophy. Durant also wrote a good book on philosophy. The story of philosophy. It's got a good rundown of the key philosophers of the last several hundred years, what they taught and some of the lives they lived. You might find it a little difficult, but hey, you can't just read the easy stuff. Key phrase to add here in parentheses, don't just read the easy stuff. You won't grow. You won't change. You won't develop. Tackle the more difficult stuff. Next, novels. Novels are good. Sometimes an intriguing story keeps our attention so that the author can weave in the philosophy he or she is trying to get across. Anne Rand was probably better at that than anybody else I could possibly think of. Atlas shrugged some of those towering novels. The novel kept us intrigued, but guess what she was doing all the time? Feeding us her philosophy, feeding us her philosophy. Now, whether you agreed with her philosophy or not, you had to admit she was really good at getting it out there, weaving it through the story, in the dialogue and in the speeches and in the text. Fabulous. Novels. Novels are good. Now, here's a little personal advice. Skip the trash. You know. Someone says, well, sometimes you can find something valuable in a trashy novel. I wouldn't go through it to find it. You can find a crust of bread in a garbage can, but I wouldn't go through it. <laughs> Number one, you don't need the reputation. So not enough time to read the brilliant stuff, the good stuff. Skip the trash, really. My personal advice on personal becoming more valuable than you are. Next is biographies and autobiographies, the story of stories of successful people, unsuccessful people. There's some dramatic stuff. Right. Over the last hundred years, it's been written, biographies and autobiographies. Here's one of the best, the Bible. The Bible is a unique book because it's got a list of human stories on one side of the ledger, another list of human stories on the other side of the ledger. One's called examples, another's called warnings. And here's what we've got to have on biographies and autobiographies, both warnings and examples. In the Bible, the examples, the Bible says, look at these people's lives, follow them, follow their philosophy, follow their advice. Then we got the warnings, right? Don't do what these people did. They messed up their life, threw their life away. Vitally important, both sides of the scenario. Now, if your life story ever gets in one of those books, make sure they use it as an example, not a warning. Also, we need balance, both sides, balance, good and evil, biographies, autobiographies. You need a book on Gandhi. You need a book on Hitler. One to illustrate how high a human being can go, and the other one to illustrate what? How low and despicable a human being can become. You need both sides of the scenario. Next, accounting. Got to have a little, at least primary view of accounting. Kids have got to start learning the difference between a debit and a credit. Next is law. We all need, right, a little bit. You don't have to be a lawyer, but you got to know contracts, what to sign, what not to sign. Backups, good advice, how to be safe rather than sorry. All of us need a little law, not a lawyer, but a little law, especially these complicated days. Everything's in court these days. I learned this the hard way. Company wanted to borrow money a long time ago, up in Canada. Company wanted to borrow some money. The bank said, well, yes, we will loan the company the money if Mr. Roan will sign personally. And I wanted to play hero, and I knew the company could pay it back. Quarter of a million dollars. So I signed. No problem. Sure enough, within less than a year, they paid it all back. Quarter of a million dollars. I am now a hero. Well, about a year later, this company gets in financial trouble. They go back to the bank and borrow this quarter of a million dollars again. I said... I hope my phone doesn't ring because I won't sign the note this time. Because I knew they were in trouble. I knew they were probably going to go bankrupt. My phone never rang. I'm off the hook. Sure enough, within less than a year, the company goes bankrupt. I can't pay. But I get this letter from the bank saying, Dear Mr. Rohn, since the company cannot perform its obligation and pay this quarter of a million dollars, and since we have here your personal guarantee... Would you please send us your check for a quarter of a million dollars? I said, hey, hold it, hold it. There must be some mistake here. I signed that first note, and they paid it all back. I wouldn't have signed the second note. I didn't sign the second note. Well, 
What I didn't know I had originally signed was a continuing guarantee. So now I know what the word continuing means. <laughs> I'm asking you to study a little law, know what to sign, know how to defend yourself, right? Say, hey, we'll get back. Don't sign too quickly. I mean, there's all kinds of things here. Be a student. Don't be lazy in learning. How to defend as well as nourish. How to grow as well as take care of your enemies. You've got to learn. Let your library indicate that you're a serious student about personal relationships with your family, gifts and skills, economics, and all the rest. Here's the next one. Economics. We're going to study that when we come back from our break. Economics. We're going to cover, especially for the kids today, how to become financially independent. We're going to let the adults listen. I've been teaching kids for the last 18, 19 years how to be rich by 40, 35 if you're extra bright. Most kids think they're extra bright. They go for 35 or much sooner if you find a unique opportunity. We're going to get into that. Be a student of economics. Next, culture, sophistication. Don't leave that out of your life. Culture, sophistication. Culture is part of the fabric of the nation. Culture is what makes us different from dogs and animals. Culture is what makes us different from the barbarians. Culture, sophistication. Be a student of the dance and the art and the music and all the rest of those extraordinary human values that are possible for us all to participate in as well as to enjoy. Be a student of culture. And the last one is spirituality. Study it from the Bible and all the related books about spirituality. If you're a believer, study and practice. Let your library show you're a serious student. Next, keep a journal. Shelf said, Mr. Owen, not only be a student, but the good ideas that you develop from the books. Keep a separate journal. Write all this stuff down. Here's what he said. Don't trust your memory. If you're serious about becoming wealthy and powerful and sophisticated and healthy, influential, cultured, unique, keep a journal. Don't trust your memory. If you listen to something valuable, write it down. Come across something important, write it down. Write it down. Now, I used to take notes on pieces of paper and torn off corners and backs of old envelopes and restaurant placemats and long sheets and narrow sheets and little sheets and pieces thrown in a drawer. Found out, best way, keep a journal. I've been keeping these journals now since age 25. It makes up a valuable part of my own learning, and it's a valuable part of my library. My own journals now form a good portion of my own library. I'm trying to get kids to do like I do, be a buyer of empty books. Kids find it interesting I'd buy an empty book, especially at my status in life. What did I pay for this one? $26. <laughs> kids say, $26 for an empty book? Why would you do that? Well, the reason I paid $26 is to press me to see if I can't find something worth $26 to put in here. And I'm telling you, all my journals are private. But if you got a hold of one of my journals, you wouldn't have to look very far until you would say, this is worth more than $26. I must admit, if you got a glimpse of Mr. Rohn's journals, you'd have to say he is a serious student.